Hello, my name is Nicole, and thank you so much for taking the time out to listen. Today we are talking about the character of demons, the character of demons and those individuals who need to uh, be refreshed on demons and what exactly is it that they do and who they are and all of that. Uh, this message will definitely be beneficial to you. Uh, someone made a comment about uh, me when I referred to the uh, children having bizarre behavior uh, when um, they're being attacked by demons. And I didn't get into specific details as to what the bizarre behavior might be. And the reason for that is because a parent knows his or her child. And if I was to list all of the things that I personally thought was bizarre, it may not uh, be uh, the right descriptions for some uh, someone's child who may be under demonic attack. I will tell you that if a child is doing some things out of the ordinary, um, then yes, you need to pay close attention to who is in fact at work in their life and what they have brought into their life or what you may have given them. Okay. Um, if a child is uh, out of his or her routine or seems to say some uh, things that, you know, make you feel strange or you know that the child um, is acting evilly. OK, um, there are other children even speaking about the things that they say and do. Um, you got to know that there's something going on with the child. OK, but. This message is getting into the character of demons and it is not child related, but I'm sure that you could connect some dots with some folks in your family, whether they are children or adults or what have you, that um, just might show that there's a demonic influence of some sort. OK, and this sort of thing isn't limited to at home. It could be at work. It could be at the church. It could be at your favorite store that you like to shop with the clerks. Um, you know, demons are everywhere and they influence people in so many different ways. These are unseen entities. These are, uh, you know, spirits in the spiritual realm. These are things that you cannot explain that no matter, you know, what people tell you that they're not giving you um, the peace that you need concerning the demons because, well, you know, maybe you've taken the child to the doctor. Maybe you took the husband here, there and everywhere. Um, the wife or what have you, the girlfriend, a boyfriend, um, you know, tried to get them counseling and yet, and still there's something around them that keeps causing problems. Okay. So yes, we are talking about the character of demons. What do these things do? Well, in Judges 9.23, God sent a spirit of ill will between Abimelech and the men of Sheshem, and the men of Sheshem dealt treacherously with Abimelech. Okay, so one thing about demons is that they will uh, come into men and they will cause men to act very evil. They will come into women. They'll come into children. Um, they are not um, weak. Okay, they are not um, in the way that Hollywood, um, depicts them, um, all the time. Now there are some things that Hollywood is right on point with and other times, uh, they make demons seem to be friendly and sweet and nice, which initially, um, when they're using people, they are until suddenly the person's voice is strange. And I've heard this sort of thing over the phone. Um, the person starts saying some things in an unknown tongue or they act weird or strange in the sense that they are um, not who you know them to be. Okay. So yes, they will inhabit men and cause them to do as well as women and others um, to do some strange things. Acts 16, 16 says that uh, a girl was possessed with a spirit of divination. Okay. And what she did was she brought her masters much profit by fortune telling. So they're not stupid. They are intelligent and they can see things and tell you things that you didn't even know. OK, they are, in fact, powerful beings. And we know this to be true in Mark 5, 1 through 5. Then they came to the other side of the sea, to the country of the Gardernus. And when he had come out of the boat, immediately there met him out of the tomb. And this is Jesus who showed up. Um, there was there was a man who showed um, who, who was there 
um, with an unclean spirit who had his dwelling among the tombs and no one could bind him, not even with chains, you see. And you can call this all sorts of labels, but the point is, is that the man was bound and uh, the chains couldn't even keep him because he had often been bound with shackles and chains and the chains had been pulled apart by him and the shackles broken in pieces. Neither could anyone tame him. And always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs crying out and cutting himself with stones. And people like this are that strong that are behind all sorts of cells and so forth. Okay. They're intelligent and they're strong. It's going to be hard to keep somebody in some handcuffs that is like this. Okay. What would make them so strong? Okay. Demons, demons, okay, goes beyond some chemical that people put in people's bodies and all this other stuff. All right, they do understand what they're doing and they do understand what is being done to them. Matthew 8, 29 uh, says, and suddenly they cried out saying, what have we to do with, G with you, Jesus, you son of God? They do recognize Jesus, okay? And they do recognize when Jesus is within someone. That's why some folks will just keep on walking. You'll say, wow, she's wow, she's crazy. Ooh, you might be even weird, weirded out by that person, might be even scared of them. But then that that uh, person is scared of you because of the Jesus w that's within you. And so they'll keep on moving or they'll avoid you with the plague. OK, what have we to do with you, Jesus, you son of God? Have you come here to torment us before the time? OK, saying righteous, true things, uh, speaking Jesus's name does uh, have a tormenting effect on demons. And some people don't want to stay in your presence for too long because there's something about you that they don't like. There's something that just makes them makes their flesh crawl. And some folks will even get sick around people who are of light. OK, um, so they are, uh, you know, they do have emotions and they do have their share of feelings and so forth. Mark 5, 7, and he cried out with a loud voice and said, what have I to do with you, Jesus, son of the most high God? I implore you by God that you do not torment me. Okay. They don't want to be tormented. They don't want the truth. They don't want to hear you. They don't want to see you, child of light. And this is why you're not going to get along with everyone, because if I'm plagued with demons and I got a lot going on in my life and nobody seems to care and nobody, you know, is is a, uh, going to help me or I don't want your help. I don't want you coming around your nice face, your happy smile, your <laughs> you see, because the demons will move on some people that you just get on my nerves every time you come around. You're too nice. You're too happy. You're too this and that. And God says to the believer, don't go around her right now. Don't go around him right now. Or don't ever go around him or her because they are plagued with demons. Okay. These demons, they do have their share of um, rituals. Okay. They do break bread with other demons and they will tempt you to want to sit at their tables okay first corinthians 10 20 21 says rather that the things which the gentiles sacrifice they sacrifice to demons and not to god and i do not want you to have fellowship with demons you cannot drink the cup of the lord and the cup of demons this is paul speaking you cannot partake of the lord's table and of the table of demons they have their share of uh, books uh, media that they give people uh, they recruit others. First um, Timothy four one. Now the Spirit expressly says that in latter times some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. Pray and ask the Lord before you go following after people who their doctrine sounds good. You know it sounds freeing. It seems like. You don't have to um, do too much. So you go off and then the next thing you know, you find out you're in bondage. Okay. They um, have all sorts of powers. Revelation 16, 13, 14 gets into that. Um, they also have their share of desires and so forth. Matthew 8, 28, 31. And they do have um feelings acts eight seven so that's just some of what the demons have now let's get into 
what um, they will do to try to get you to worship them. Okay. They will come up with all sorts of reasons as to why God is not, um, not worthy to be praised. That God is not um, an entity that is real. Okay. They will tell you that God doesn't care about you. They will, they will even go so far as to say that um, they are gods and that they can make you one. Okay. All of this falls under idolatry. Deuteronomy 32, 17 says they sacrificed to demons, not to God, to gods they did not know, to new gods, new arrivals that your fathers did not fear. They have ministers that serve them and they serve them through their occult affiliations, their cult organizations, and they are not to speak sometimes what those affiliations are. Okay. Because they know, some of these ministers do know that their affiliations are demonic in nature. 2 Corinthians eleven fifteen. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also transform themselves into ministers of righteousness, whose end will be according to their works. And why would a minister even affiliate himself with groups that he knows are wrapped up in demonic activity? Because of money, because of power, because of uh, fame. They want to uh, be front and center. They want to be adored. They want to be a demigod. They say that they're about God, God. But when you look at the homes, when you look at the cars, when you look at the things that they have acquired through their civic associations, occultic in nature, you realize, oh my goodness, they are serving two masters. Okay. Not every minister that has a lot of wealth is caught up in occult types of things. So I need to uh, add that they are not. Some people just bless ministers because they have been blessed. And that's a beautiful thing. And those ministers, ministers who are of light, who are about God's business, they will continue to give praise where praise goes. And they will not divide up their time serving groups that are affiliated with demonic activity. Okay. So you got some insight as to the demons and the fact that they are real and that they will do all sorts of things to get the believer to uh, not want to walk with him. Okay. With God any longer. OK, why would God allow Satan to continue with all of his foolishness in a believer's life? Well, for one, he wants believers to be humble. He wants them to walk with him. OK, um, he wants God or God wants, um, you know, the believer to stay strong in his or her faith and to um, persevere and to uh also build up his or her character. Okay. And you can't do that if, um, you are not under some type of trial. Okay. And not only that, there is going to be a reward, um, you know, once the believer passes. And so he or she is going to go through all sorts of conflicts on this side. And then on the other side, get to sit back and enjoy <laughs> that crown of life. So, We've got to go through some things in order to be able to serve the Lord in the way that he wants us to serve him. He has chosen us. And so when he's chosen us, he knows the direction that he wants to put us on. But we've got to be willing to listen to him. He's a he's a loving God. We've also got to be obedient to his will. If this is what we want, if you want to be a child of God, then you've got to be willing to trust him that what he is going to do in your life is sufficient. And he knows what the demonic is up to. So it makes sense to take 
you know, um, refuge under his wing. Okay. Second Corinthians 12, seven says, unless I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of the revelations, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I be exalted above measure. Okay. So a thorn of the, a thorn in the flesh is given to many believers, just as it was with Paul, because God knows how we are very tempted to be prideful and so forth. And so he allows us to remain humble through that thorn in the flesh that we all receive sooner or later. Um, in Jude, or I'm sorry, well, Jude 2024 will get in, um, will, will help you out in terms of this character and the faith of the believer and the connection to why God will allow Satan to continue with all of his negativity and hurting us and whatever else. But James 1 12 says, blessed is the man who endures temptation for when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. And then in first John four and four verses through uh, uh, four uh, through six, you are of God, little children and have overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. They are of the world. Therefore, they speak as of the world and the world hears them. We are of God. He who knows God hears us. OK, he who is not of God does not hear us. That's why some messages some people are not going to ever receive. Because they are too busy receiving messages of Satan. Okay. Entertainment of Satan. Okay. So they're not going to hear you say, uh, saying, if you're delivering a message over and over again, and you're like, I am so frustrated with trying to speak truth to this person. They can't hear you and God hasn't chosen them. So move on now. He who knows God hears us. He who is not of God does not hear us by this. We know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. OK, so we know that there are those who are not going to listen, who are, you know, going to keep up some drama. They're going to cause problems and so forth. We know the spirit of error because we see all of the foolishness that's going on. But then we also know the spirit of truth because of those that we can witness. You know, they are hearing from God. They know about God. They, you know, have a connection to God. Right. OK, so I leave you with this. Thank you for listening to YouTube NM Enterprise 7. If you haven't subscribed, please do. Um, if you would like to give, I just encourage you to. And also, uh, if there's anything in the description box that interests you, please do check it out. Thank you for listening. To God be the glory.